Good evening and welcome to the second public information meeting for the Wilderness Trail um, coming to you soon at the Wilderness Park over off Westmoreland. Um, today we will be talking about um, the surveys, the public input that we've already received, and we'll start looking at some um, preliminary conceptual plans for the trail. So if we want to just start that presentation, um, thank you all for joining us. Um, I'm Kelly Boatwright. I am the project manager for Parks and Recreation. Um, today I have with me uh, Mr. Joe Kaffer from um, CapTech Engineering, um, who is helping us with this plan. Um, on our Zoom call tonight, we also have um, Dr. David Barth. Um, we have Brad King, the Assistant Director for Parks and Recreation, also with us if there are any questions. Um, tonight, your, your microphones will be muted, um, but you can type in questions into the Q&A. Um, we will answer those questions at the end of the presentation. And from here, I'm going to let Joe kind of take us through um, a lot of, if, uh, if you were able to join us, we had actually our first meeting on March 21st, 25th, I'm sorry. Um, we also did some public engagement at our Citizen Summit this year for the, um, for the Wilderness Trail. And then we had an online survey that we put out to the public um, for the month of April that we closed out at the end of April. We got a lot of good feedback. Um, but if you weren't able to join us, we kind of want to go over some of the existing conditions for the site, and then we'll go into some of the results from the survey and some of the great input and feedback that we got from you, the public. So with that, I'll turn it over to Joe. Hey, thank you, Kelly. Um, again, my name is Joe Capra, and uh, I work with CapTech Engineering, and we're assisted by uh, Dr. David Barth, who's uh, joining us via Zoom today. So uh, first thing I'd just like to bring to your attention is, is uh, Port St. Lucie. Um, has a multimodal plan for, um, for all the residents to, to walk a uh, walking trail wilderness, and we're talking wilderness trail today. Uh, it's ranked number one. It's a strategic plan priority project. Um, and of course, it's typically considered for uh, bikeways and trails. And obviously, this is a high performance public space that we're going to be talking about. So um, the good news is, is uh, this project is ranked number one, and we uh, hope to move it along and uh, start construction sometime in the next year. Uh, second uh, slide pretty much tells you that um, the project itself is uh, part of a, 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 a sidewalk program also that the city has. And uh, Cambridge, uh, the street, was uh, originally planning on having a sidewalk. And, and again, we're going to combine the two of them into a trail system. Uh, next slide. Thank Sorry, you. that's me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that's the, that's the second. So the, 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 the one point on this slide that's probably important to note, uh, you can also see the existing sidewalk along Morningside uh, as well as Westmoreland. Uh, our intention is obviously to enhance that uh, area with more trail system and uh, go through the Wilderness Park area. Um, next slide. Uh, this, this pretty much shows um, the area that uh, not only the the trail will go through, but you can also see in the green areas some wetlands and some upland areas, some, some areas that are native out there that we hope to, to utilize to enhance the trail. There's a lake out there and so forth, and it's around the Visconti development. Uh, so the intention is to obviously utilize these uh, environmentally sensitive areas, enhance them as much as we can, is, uh, is also uh, available for us to, to provide some viewing areas and so forth next to the trail. Um, the next slide is, um, again, pretty much showing you um, the, the existing conditions. If you can uh, look at the, uh, on the right side, you'll see some stars. Pretty much they show you the views that we have out there of a, the current sidewalk. Uh, one of the ideas is to make that sidewalk a little wider. Uh, but this, the, the most important thing to note is the, the views that you have, whether there's a lake view, uh, whether there's vegetation and trees. Obviously, the idea is there are some park benches out there and, and places for uh, people to sit while they're also walking the trail system. Um, next slide is um, pretty much showing you items that are uh, would, 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 would have been the former, former fairway area of, of this wilderness park area. Um, again, we'd like to take some um, opportunity to, to uh, utilize the adjacent uh, trees and vegetation, of course, 
for, for shade for the people that would walk on a trail, but also the viewing site of the, the wetland areas where we, we know there's, besides vegetation, there's also some species out there that would be good to watch, whether there's birds and, and so forth. Uh, the second thing is there's, there's lakes, and uh, again, we wanna utilize the area up against the, um, uh, the current fairway, old fairway area for, for maybe uh, uh, adding the sidewalk or the, the trail system close to that area. The next slide um, pretty much uh, depicts it, it depicts some um, some so stormwater swale areas that cross what will be the future um, trail system. And uh, as you can see, they're, they're they're more looking like a swale, a, a ditch of some sort. We'd of course like to enhance them uh, with maybe some bio swales. And again, the idea is to not only have a swale here, but uh, but uh, but provide some enhancement for drainage, some environmental enhancements. Also, the main objective, of course, is a trail system, and we obviously will provide culverts across these areas. Um, the next slide pretty much uh, kind of shows you um, the visibility of, of the public, sur the information on the public survey, and I'm gonna turn that over to, to Dr. Barth as well as to Kelly to kind of tell you a little bit about the uh, information activities that they heard were most uh, important for the residents so far. Dr. Barth, would you like to go over the public surveys or would you like for me to do that? Hearing nothing from Dr. Barth, I'm going, oh, there he is. <laughs> Good evening. Oh, I think you're muted. Give us just one moment, moment Dr. Barth. I think we're having a technical difficulty. Can you talk now, Dr. Barth? Uh, no. Oh, we're hearing you a little bit there. Well, go ahead, Kelly. And, and, uh, and oh, we got you. No, go ahead and start going through it. Okay. Can we go back to the slides? Okay. So, um, as we mentioned earlier, we actually we went out for. Um, and asked for public input in several different venues. Um, initially, the Citizen Summit, just for some preliminary information. Um, then on March 25th, we had our first public um, input uh, or public workshop um, where we polled the audience, the Zoom audience, on several different um, questions regarding activities and amenities and, and the trail route and things of that nature for our Wilderness Trail. We also put a survey out in, um, in the month of April. Um, got a lot of good feedback, over 300 respondents to that survey. Um, and so with that, so the, the questions that we were very interested in is what, what activities would, would the families and the residents most enjoy along Wilderness Trail? So um, of those things, bicycling, bird watching, walking, um, meditating, jogging, picnicking, um, just playing, uh, reading, uh, yoga potentially, and just visiting, skating. Um, and then our findings showed that, um, so the, the, we had the Zoom polling results from March 25th, the online Survey Monkey results um, showed that, um, you know, walking, biking, and things of that nature kind of ranked along the top, you know, the wants and wishes of the, of the community. So, um, and we also asked what amenities might enhance your family's experience. So, so with that, what would we like to see? Benches, public art, community gardens, disc golf, uh, drinking fountains, uh, environmental historical exhibits, uh, wildlife habitat, trash receptacles, shade trees. Um, and just showing some of those restrooms. And so the results of that came in and we saw that shade trees ranked very high, uh, benches, restrooms, trash receptacles, you know, a lot of the standard amenities that you would see along um, a trail. The good thing, Kelly, was we were looking for consistency and the responses from the, the public Zoom meeting were pretty consistent with the responses from the online survey. So right. it really helped us figure out what the top priorities were to recommend to council. Exactly. 
And so then we also asked about how we, we would like to see the, the trail be routed through Wilderness Park. And did you want to talk a little bit about this, Joan? Yes, thank you, Kelly. So uh, we basically uh, laid out a, about five locations for the trail system. Uh, the idea was is to, and to utilize the amenities as well as the activities that were requested. And so um, basically the, the first one um, is closer to Cambridge Drive and it's parallel to Cambridge Drive. Uh, then we did some that were along the wooded areas. And then we did uh, a couple of them that meandered through the park. Um, and then we did some with some loops and so forth. So I'm gonna just go, go quickly through these uh, five different options. Um, the, the next one is pretty much showing you uh, the option one, which is parallel to Cambridge Drive. Uh, you can pretty much see uh, these, the side streets that, that tie into Cambridge Drive. The, the intention is obviously to have it where, where people can uh, walk onto those, uh, to that trail system there. Uh, this, this is about a one mile trail system here and it runs parallel with Cambridge. Uh, the intention here is to obviously connect Morningside uh, over to Westmoreland and eventually up to the Pioneer Park on your left side of the project and show that uh, we can provide continuity with a trail system to both parks as well as to, um, to the Saints Golf Course area. Uh, the next well, slide. I'll add one thing there. It's okay. a mile trail but it's a critical part of the citywide trail system. So the larger goal is that residents will be able to walk or ride their bikes as an alternative mode of transportation in addition to getting in their cars. So you know, ultimately the whole idea is to connect the entire city up with a, a wide multi-use trail system. Thank, thank you, Dave, that's a good point. We, we obviously are trying to make some continuity to the rest of the trail system that the city will be building and so forth. Uh, option two, um, is really a, an option that gets a little closer to uh, the wooded vegetative areas, the wetland areas that we talked about prior uh, to, uh, previously, and essentially it meanders a little bit more. Again, uh, we showed some air items that would be needed. That, that, that length is just a little bit longer than a mile. We've kind of also showed on the slide how much time it takes to, to walk those kind of, those, that type of trail. But again, it gets closer to the vegetative area that's adjacent to, uh, uh, the, the open area along the park, the Wilderness Park. Um, again, the same, uh, same areas on both sides. Again, it'll be by, provide continuity to the trail system that the, the city will be doing throughout the whole community. So next slide is option three. And again, that one is um, meandering again uh, through, throughout the um, open areas. It's not so close to the, to the vegetative areas. And again, it's, it's more in the open area that's out there currently in the Wilderness Park. Uh, that, uh, that's a little shorter than um, the last one, of course. But again, once we do that, we still need to bring, bring people from the side streets over to the trail. Uh, so again, we, we can, you can see by the symbol of a walker there, you can see how we, we've tied, uh, tied in the adjacent community uh, to the sidewalk, to the trail system, I'm sorry. Uh, the next option is number four. Um, this one you'll probably hear a little bit more about, but again, um, we heard that a lot of people would like to be doing jogging and walking, and we had, we, we assume we're gonna find some people that want longer routes than others, and so we put some loops in the system, and uh, essentially this one uh, pretty much is, is much longer if you use all the loops and so forth, but essentially, uh, I say much longer, it's, it's probably about a little over a mile and a half, uh, but essentially it, it does give you a little more opportunity for, for various walking paths to follow. And if you want a short walk or a long walk, again, the idea is to have the continuity between uh, the, the two park areas as well as uh, to the Saints Golf Course and other trails that the city will be building. And the last option is uh, uh, option number five. It's meandering with the same amount of loops. Uh, the only difference here is we have placed a bridge across the waterway um, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but essentially um, it provides a, a, a little longer a little longer trail system. Um, obviously the bridge um, is also have, has a price tag with that, so we need to think about when we want to build that and if we want to build that at all. Again, the same ending points on either side of the, uh, trail, the trail system. Um, having said all that, uh, pretty much um, we uh, did a polling and Essentially, uh, the trail system with a loop seems to be the preferred preferred uh, option that we, we have here. So 
Uh, that's consistent between the two surveys that we're taking. And so um, we've kind of laid out what, what we believe is the preferred one, of course, but tonight uh, we want to check that with everybody's comments. Uh, and again, uh, it's, it seems to be the option four probably fits in more with what we're thinking of uh, building as a trail system. Uh, that would include some native trees, shade trees, as well as street trees. Those are things we will have to add. Uh, there's site improvements such as benches and hammocks and trash containers, receptacles, which we put in all the park systems and so forth. Uh, restrooms with drinking fountains uh, could happen. Uh, they may not happen all at once, but the fact that these are items that uh, we've heard that were preference. Picnic pavilions with shade, uh, dog waste stations. Again, crosswalks to the adjacent, uh, adjacent neighborhoods is, is important. Uh, so those, uh, the people that live right there can walk right to this trail system and, and continue through all the trail systems throughout the city. Um, again, landscaping trails, entrances. Again, we, we intend to uh, put in a, quite, a, quite a bit of landscaping here for shade for the people we understand and it's also for, for flowering trees so people can have a beautiful walk and so forth or, or jog in this area. And last but not least, we have on that list of removing exotics. Uh, if you look at this area, vegetative area next to the trail system, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of exotics in the area. We'd like to clean them out and be able to show the native habitat that exists there and also enhance the stormwater treatment for, the, for that area. Um, having said all that, <coughs> we have put together just some ideas of cost. And uh, for the trail itself, it's, a, it's about a $700,000 uh, cost for, for the trail. And we're thinking of a concrete sidewalk, the bioswales that we talked about in those ditches out there, and then some signage and so forth. That's about a, that's a little over $700,000 worth of work. Uh, the next thing is we, we tried to quote, uh, quote the price on uh, the various uh, improvements, whether they're shade trees, benches, restrooms, crosswalks, and environmental historic kiosk, um, small shade trees and picnic pavilions, uh, drinking fountains, and, and some public art. Again, when you put that to the, uh, add that, you're about $1.3 million more. Um, so of course, it's important to, to understand what is the um, total cost, and that's about $2.2 .2 million. Um, that's a, a fairly uh, nice trail system. Uh, we, we believe that we've kind of touched on just about everything we've heard people would like, uh, but now we get into how we pay for that. Um, currently, we're ranked number one, and, and it's ranked number two on a grant system for the RTP grant for $500,000. It's a statewide grant. Uh, we feel we've done pretty well on getting to number two. Hopefully we'll, we'll be, able to, to be able to bring the funding home for that, but that's a half a million dollars. And currently in the budget for 2021-22, there's $500,000 to do the trail. Um, and again, we will apply for other federal and state grant funding too, so we can, we can pay for all the amenities that are being requested. So you can see we can at least get the trail system started. Um, we may not put all the amenities in at once. It's our intention that uh, hopefully we can start the construction of this in 2022. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to, to Kelly to, to, to listen to any questions we may have. Yeah, so we do have a few questions. Um, the first one is, there are some existing trails in the wooded areas around the wetlands. Will they be included in the plans and or remain following completion of the project? It's beautiful back there. Um, I would just mention that the areas that are more wooded actually are not within our site control. Um, those belong to the surrounding developers, uh, Viscani, and um, I believe there's another one over there. Um, so we don't have really any control over whether or not um, the trails stay back there. Um, I would say they've kind of naturally progressed to be there. So if people are using them, I mean, as long as Viscani doesn't take issue with it, um, they may remain. But um, in our design and plan, um, we aren't planning for those trails necessarily. We are looking, though, when we go out to the site, um, to, as, as much as the exotics will let us take a look, we're, we're going to see if we think there's some places where we run the trail through some shaded areas. Right, because the, I think there is a little bit up into that yeah. wooded buffer that we do have, we do own, yeah. uh, the city does own, or was per, uh, relayed to the city, but um, a lot of that that's deeper into those woods does not belong to the city, so we wouldn't be able to develop anything back there. 
Um, so the next question is, currently the park is used for many activities such as walking dogs, riding bicycles, throwing baseballs and frisbees. Uh, will we lose all of that for the addition of walking paths? I would um, tend to say that the uh, addition of the walking paths would actually enhance um, those or those activities. So I don't think anything that, that was mentioned um, in that question um, would be lost per se. Um, would you have to maybe potentially look out for a, a walker along the path if you were throwing a Frisbee or a baseball close to it? Maybe, but um, I think you I would actually enhance everything that was mentioned. <laughs> so um, does anybody else have anything to add to that? No, I think the intention, of course, is to, to allow the activities that are there now to continue and to just to find, uh, to provide a trail adjacent to them. So I, I don't see anything being lost there uh, at this point, but again, we'll, we'll place the trail and, and obviously some of those activities may need to be adjusted in their, as far as their location. Right, thank you. So then the next question, option one is really just a sidewalk. Um, option five is ideal and should have multiple bridges. We'd love to see a true wilderness trail along the wooded area and along the lakes. So yes, yeah, so while um, we did go with option four per the um, stakeholder and public input, um, I believe that that gives us kind of the best of both worlds. We're gonna get that, that sidewalk trail, if you will, that will hug Cambridge, but it'll also take us up into the, the park itself and along those waterways, as mentioned. question um, uh, okay so then we have sorry my screen's bouncing around on me a little bit there we go um, other PSL parks restrict dogs bicycles skates etc why should I believe that those same restrictions will not be placed on this park um, well this park is actually the grant particularly um, is was requested as a multi use or device diverse use non motorized park so we are designing this with the intention of being able to use it for very diverse reasons so specifically things like skating and biking will be allowed on this path um, and because the residents and the community has requested that there be you know the dog way stations is indicative of that there will be um, dogs allowed to be walked along it um, hopefully we can we can get this designed and built and, and you will see that you'll be able to do those things. Um, the next comment is actually not a question. It says, amazing job, CapTech. Um, this would be all for nothing if the natural areas are not preserved. Is there a way to preserve these areas with the property owners slash developers? I think at this point, uh, we've actually reached out to the property owner and they have showed interest in this and, and making sure that this happens. So even though they own the property, they're willing to provide easements and access in, in the area. So um, I think we, we do have some buy-in from the property owner in the first conversations. We haven't asked for an easement at this point. We haven't actually, uh, although the bridge would require an easement, of course, if we go over one of their properties, but the intention is to uh, we, we seem to we seem to have buy-in from the uh, the developers of the property and the land and the property owners association. So we still have more to do in talking talking to them, but I I don't believe we're 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 going to have a, a position where we we can't utilize this area for visually looking through the wetlands, looking at the vegetation, birding is one of the items that was requested, um, and obviously enhancing the 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 environmental areas. Yeah, I was going to say, there's no intent to remove any of the natural areas that exist. Uh, if anything, we're going to see if we have a budget to try to enhance what exists. Uh, that's where we get the exotic removal, seeing if we can restore some of the hydrology that may be a future phase. Uh, Joe mentioned stormwater improvements. Uh, we talked about native plants, really we're going from, you know, what's been a site that was cleared as a golf course, and the question is how do you restore it back um, to be as natural as possible in certain areas. So. I could see a lot of work being done over this on this two years. Thank you. So our next question, when will the boardwalk under Port St. Lucie Boulevard be completed? That should be a high priority for safety for those of us hoping to utilize both sections. Um, so we are working with the DOT currently. Um, they have a project where they are replacing the riprap, is that the right term, um, under the under the bridge. 
Um, and once that is complete, we will be comp um, working on um, completing that section of the boardwalk. Um, I believe it right now is scheduled for this coming year to begin. So, and I'm getting the nod from Brad. So next year we will begin that project. Um, okay. And... Richard had another question or a statement. Yes, I do. So one more statement. Oh, we have so much. Um, I would rather see nothing on the property than have restrictions on who can use the park and in what activities they can engage. That's just the comment that we had. And then we also have another comment. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. And. We don't have any other questions open right now, so if, is there anything anyone on the panel would like to add or discuss while we're waiting on anybody's fingers to be done typing potentially? Well, I think it's probably, usually people want to know what, you know, what, what the time frame is, and we've mentioned it just in case you didn't hear it. I, I think our goal is, is next to uh, get the concept plan uh, that we've heard from the public that they would like and we'll get that approved by the, the, the city council and once we get their blessing to move forward with a final design that'll happen rather quickly and again our goal is to to first get that grant that we have applied for and we think we have a good shot at getting uh, uh, in short order and then uh, the intention is to start construction and and we believe we can start that in the in the early part of 2022 so uh, the intention is once we get the trail in and then we can decide how much money we have, of course, and what amenities we could add initially. So um, I think uh, this will move along pretty quickly once we, um, uh, once we get the, the city council approval. And again, I think it's most important that we were able to, to get so many comments from the public, over 300 uh, responses to, to the one survey over 30 days. Was, was a huge number of people to contribute their comments to this. And of course, that will certainly improve the, the project, the product that we put out there for the public. Okay. Yeah, I'll add that when we did the <clears throat> citywide needs assessment for the parks master plan, uh, bikeways and trails was a top priority of residents and it's also turned out to be a, a top priority of, of residents countywide. So I'm really excited about this project. It's a, it's a great opportunity for us to set the tone of what a Port St. Lucie trail can look like and feel like and create a great experience and, and hopefully it'll encourage the, the city to, uh, to go even more trails and uh, really be a connected bike to network over time. So um, I'm looking forward to the grand opening day. Me too. Well, we have a couple more questions. Um, so we have a question about parking and increased traffic. So we have um, considered uh, at this point, we, we really have not placed the parking uh, parking area on the plans. That doesn't mean that one won't be put there in the future. Uh, obviously, we'll see what kind of interest we have for parking, but we do believe that there is uh, there is parking adjacent to the site, uh, both in the um, Pioneer Park area itself uh, that, that will be provide some parking. Uh, there is some parking that uh, will, will eventually be improved upon in, in, the, um, in the Saints Golf Course area. Um, and again, we see people park along the side of the road. Um, we may see some of that, which then will may drive us to decide a, in a parking area. But at this point, we have not provided uh, parking uh, for the site, and we, but we have opportunities for it that we can look at and see the participation of the public, and we'll, we'll address it at that point. Thanks, Joe. Um, next question, will there be an area for picnic grilling? So I don't think um, well, we talked about picnic pavilions. Right now, there's no uh, proposal to build grills. That'd be an easy thing to add if there's a big demand. Also, people could you know, bring portable grills right now. I assume, assume um, Brad would have to correct me, but I assume that's permitted, permissible. Um, so right now, we're trying to create the settings for picnicking, and then we'll have to see if there's a demand for grills over time. Is, is Brad looking at you, Tom? He's got a big smile on his face. That's <laughs> Brad. Is there any prohibition against grills in the park? Grill? Is it grills, individual grills in the park? That would be in developing the park, not the trail. 
Right, right but yeah. I think he's asking, is there any prohibition against people bringing their own, like, hibachis or, you know, something of that nature if we didn't have grills set in the park? Existing parks, yes. There, you, you can or you cannot? You cannot. Okay, so... Okay, so you cannot you cannot bring your own grill into the park. So it would have to be an amenity that that there was a, a demand for that we would add at a later date potentially. And I think Brad's going to address that a little further for us. Yeah, Dr. Barth, right now uh, in our existing community and neighborhood parks, you know, we do provide charcoal grills at our pavilions, um, but and people can bring in their propane gas grills, but we frown upon them bringing in their own charcoal grills for obvious reasons. Uh, many times they'll dump their still hot embers into the grass and that causes a pr problem not only for the grass, but p potentially a safety issue with people walking through it. So uh, I I'd like to stress though that tonight's meeting is talking about the development of the trail and not the development of the wilderness park itself. So many of these amenities that have been discussed in the questions that are offered tonight would uh, be potentially come about if we uh, had funding to seek further development of Wilderness Park. Thanks, Brad. So our next question is, what is the time frame for the nature area and new trails below the botanical gardens between the river and Westmoreland? Um, interestingly enough, um, the RTP grant that we just applied for um, includes those trails as well. Um, so they will be done in conjunction with, to some extent, um, the uh, wilderness trail. Um, those will be begun, as far as I'm aware, this next year as well. A lot of the things on that middle track are, gonna, are going to go into construction this next year. Um, the playground, the wild playground will start um, construction. The trails will start construction. Um, there's some development going on in, in a hopeful um, restaurant. It, it, and that's the hope that that will, that will come into play soon thereafter. So um, a lot of, lot of activity going on there in that port district. Uh, we also are doing the port master plan. So we may be um, anticipating some additional projects going on to the north of um, the port district as well in the, in the coming years. Um, are there other trails planned by the city? Any chance of a trail in the southwest along the C-23 canal? Is that the duck court area, Brad? Okay, so there is some development or a design development going on right now around the Duck Court C23 area. Um, they're hoping for, I believe, a trailhead. Maybe Brad can answer to that a little more for us. Can you? Thanks, Brad. Yeah, we have a couple of projects on the horizon that are currently uh, being planned right now, one of them being the Duck Court area. The city has a small piece of property there, and it's envisioned that we would create a very small trailhead that would allow people to... Uh, park their cars or bicycles if they chose to to ride that way to the to the trailhead and then access over the berm onto the c23 south florida water management district uh, right away and from there they would walk the the right away um again on south florida water management management district property the city does not own that property uh, so it would just be a at grade trail but uh, we do plan on providing a trailhead where people can walk and access that right of way. Thank you, Brad. Um, so I've got, thank you. Can't wait to see the restaurant in the Port District. Any contenders so far? Um, I know that they have a, a group that is betting some, some opportunities, but I don't know of any, um, anything finite at this point. And then the next question is, is there any interest happening for a restaurant going by the, oh, that's the, so that's that same area. Um, again, um, there is a group betting some potential um, uh, restaurants to go in in that section, um, but we, we don't have any further information at this time on that. And so we'll give it just another moment or two. I've got to thank you and thank you. Oh, um, why can't people not walk dogs in the Port District Park? Um, currently under chapter 96, dogs are not allowed in um, most of our parks. Um, and the Port District happens to be one of them. Um, that may change in, in future years, but at this time that, that is, that's why we can't have 
I'm sorry? It's, it's part of the city code, yeah. All right, just give another moment or two for any closing statements from our panel, and if there are no further questions. Just one item, because uh, we've had the combination of tying in Pioneer Park to this park, just so everybody understands, we, we do plan on using the existing sidewalks to provide a, a, a pathway between the parks, but also we plan on putting a crosswalk um, uh, across um, the Westmoreland Boulevard a safe area for people to be able to walk across and walk between the two parks. So that's important that whatever we place out here, whether it's in any of the trails, is that we provide safety for the, the walkers, the joggers, and provide the proper crosswalking of the, of the major roadways. So that, that's also part of the project. I do have a question for the folks who are listening. Can you still hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. We have all these side streets. I don't know if you want to put the slide back up that shows just you know the uh, show option four and then four and four. So we have all these side streets that connect over to the trail, and so for those of you that, um, who live adjacent to the park, uh, it is important for you to have a, a crosswalk at the end of every street along the neighborhood um, going out to Cam to cross over Cambridge. So. Joe, how many, um, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, is that right? Seven crossings, or no, eight. Actually, if you do all in all, there's eight or nine. Yeah, there's a, there's a total of eight, but from the neighborhood, you're absolutely right. We, we, yeah. we essentially will have a sidewalk that uh, goes from the, the intersection um, uh, to the trail system that'll be uh, right. yeah. along, the, along the, the, the trail itself. So, and yes, there's, um, there's, there's actually, there's actually uh, seven of those in that, that area, and then um, there could be eight. There, there could be eight. I think this, the drawing shows seven, but the, I see another road there that we probably will yeah. have another one too. So there'd be and eight. These are probably painted crosswalks. Um, it may have the added benefit of, of calming Cambridge a bit so that, you know, to slow down any traffic, but that's unknown. They do, could be kind of decorative. You know, they don't have to be standard DOT crosswalks, but I was just curious. For any of the folks who live adjacent to the park, if um, if you like the idea of, of crosswalks for every uh, connecting the trail to the um, the side street across Cambridge, so anybody who wants to weigh in that weigh in on that, feel free to say yes, no, whatever. What was the yes no question, Dr. Barth? Did you want to do it? I was saying if someone liked the idea, they would they could just simply type in yes, I like it, or no, I don't. But I'll be I was just curious about what the feeling. I don't see anybody uh, participating in this. So we can move on. Crosswalks. Hmm? What, what is the question you want? Avi can probably throw up a quick poll for us. Oh, okay. The question would be um, uh, Would you be in favor of a crosswalk um, located? And I'm more to use the right terminology, Joe. I call these side streets. All the streets that connect to Cambridge. Okay, so, so the question would being, you, would you like cro a crosswalk at, at the each, foot of every street con uh, crossing Cambridge? Yeah, each, each street crossing Cambridge. Would you like a crosswalk at each street crossing Cambridge? Or connecting to Cambridge. Connecting Cambridge. Yeah. I think it's a designated crosswalk depicted yeah. there. Which sometimes is done in paint, mm -hmm. or it's, right. you can do right. a number of things. But the 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 one thing is, is there's not a sidewalk on the uh, on the side streets. Most of the people, I believe, are walking on the road. From the from so because there's not a a a sidewalk on the opposite side, that would be difficult, is what you're saying. Yeah. Right. Well, we could put a painted crosswalk, but it would be it, right. it would be. But the point is, it's just I just want to make sure everybody realizes it'd be walking down the street to the intersection and then the question is do you just want to put a painted crosswalk there so we'd have to look into the, the feasibility of that but of course we could if there's interest we'll look into that okay yeah so you'd walk down your street to cambridge you'd cross over a painted crosswalk and then there'd be a small concrete sidewalk that would pick you up from cambridge and take you connecting to the trail do you have the poll question ready avi Just one moment. We're gonna we're gonna have a poll question for everyone for in just one second. Yeah, one person already beat everybody to the punch. Eight times. Eight 
Anthony Kennedy. To the trail. Okay. Yeah, let's slow that. So we're gonna we're gonna put a little poll up for everyone if you'll just answer yes or no. Um, and if it's not worded exactly right, then we'll, we still know what the what the uh, the intent is here, so we can kind of get an idea of how okay. everyone feels about that. Yeah. So there'll be a crosswalk at your street connecting over to the trail. Right. Joe, you can't vote. So yeah, we're not we're vote. not allowed to vote, so we won't vote. Right. We good? Um, uh, depending on if two people voted when we ended, or? Um, we're going to give you about 10 more seconds to answer yes or no to our polling question. Would you be in favor of a crosswalk at each street that connects to the park? Okay, and closing that out. Um, so okay, pretty okay. overwhelming link. No. So, um, okay. Good to know. Yeah, so, information. so what we could do is uh, the major ones and then if there's a need over time to add more, that's easily done. Um, okay. Interesting. Yep. All right. We have another. Yeah, no, these are good comments from uh, Judy and Norman about the plan. Do you want me to read them or do you see? Um, I'm just, we're, well, I was going to say that, you know, someone uses the property every day and don't think it's yeah. necessary. I think these were kind of answered, that one was kind of answered through, they probably said no to our to our poll. Um, and then if you want to advertise the park and trail as ADA accessible, then access from adjacent streets should be implemented. Just a thought, maybe a way to consolidate yeah. the eight crossings. So... Yeah, that's the question. If I come down my street and there's no crosswalk and there's no concrete walk that gets me over the swale, you know, then I'm not really ADA accessible. So that's, that's some of the details we'll have to look at. But I like the idea of us maybe being uh, more surgical as to where they would go um, as opposed to thinking we need to do it on the streets. So just so um, we are clear, the, 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 the trail will be ADA accessible, okay? okay? Right. And, and we will tie a sidewalk to the road so people can come off of the the uh, Cambridge and get on the sidewalk and it'll be ADA accessible. There will not be a step there uh, to get up there. Um, and obviously, if, uh, whether you wanted a, a depiction of that area where people can enter the park, that may be the same, same may, may accomplish, I think, enough to show people where they can get access to the the walking trail that goes parallel and meanders through the park. So, so we'll give it a few seconds to see if any more questions pop up. And just to kind of recap, um, we are hoping to hear um, back from our RTP grant application sometime this fall. As um, Joe mentioned, we are ranked number two in the state, so we're very hopeful that that will be awarded. Um, and if so, um, we'd like to take this out to bid um, sometime in the early winter, probably the early next year, and um, start construction soon thereafter. So. Right. If there are no other questions, um, Joe, did you have anything you'd like to close with tonight? Just um, again, thanks for everybody for their comments. They're very good comments, and I think we have a plan that seems to be supported by everybody. And again, just uh, stay tuned for the trail system. It'll be put in place. Dr. Barth, did you have anything to add? No, I'll just echo what we said before. I'm looking forward to um, celebrating the grand opening when we get there. I'm excited as well. So. Um, if there are no other comments or questions tonight, we thank you all for joining us once again for the Wilderness Trail Public Information Meeting Number 2. Um, once this plan has been fully developed, we will take it to Council for final approval and uh, phasing instruction, and uh, we'll uh, hope to get back with you with a beautiful trail, maybe sometime Maybe this time next year we'll start, but we'll at least be started on it, hopefully. So thank you all for joining us um, and have a good night.